So I wanted to do an updated video to talk a little bit more in depth about DNS over TLS and DNS over HTTPS and what the two use cases are for these. So with, let's say your home or business network and you have your own PFSense router, I bring PFSense up because I know it supports DNS over transport layer security. This is kind of a really basic network setup. So you have your laptop, desktop, your computers of your local network or whatever devices you may have on there. And they're hopefully, if you're going to the majority of websites, they do support HTTPS. So we know the website is secure and the traffic between your endpoint and the internet is encrypted via HTTPS. But for many people, the out of the box default settings is what they leave on there. And that means your unencrypted DNS comes from your workstation through your router and out to the internet unencrypted. Well, then we go in PFSense and we turn on DNS over TLS and we choose a supported DNS server that does support this as well. Now we've encrypted everything, leaving our network to the greater internet. Now, not every workstation is going to support encrypted DNS. Matter of fact, many of your IoT devices will not have this facility built in as of right now. That's changing in the future as more devices get this way. So we're just gonna assume that most of the time you're using standard DHCP and acquiring whatever DNS servers are given to you on your local network. But as I said, that's unencrypted traffic. But when you're at your home or office, generally speaking, you trust this network not to be uh, messing or monkeying with the DNS or doing anything you don't want done with it. Therefore, it should work and you are secure in this. Then we look at the other method here. Let's go to a coffee house or somewhere that has publicly available Wi-Fi. You then have encrypted HTTPS, which is great because um, years ago when there was not HTTPS on many things. Uh, it was really easy to sniff passwords or anything at any you know publicly available Wi-Fi. With HTTPS, that's become much, much more difficult, but you would do so by monkeying with the DNS because your unencrypted DNS requests go out, go through the uh, router here at the coffee house. They can see your DNS. They can also manipulate the DNS. This is sometimes what they do to get you to go to those sign-in pages, they create redirections and get you to sign into their proxies or what agree with their terms and conditions. But because you're passing it back along to the internet, it comes out over here unencrypted. And this is where more concerns can happen. The reason you may want to run DNS over TLS in your PFSense is to block your IP ISP from knowing what DNS queries you're making because they don't just go out unencrypted, they go out completely available and logged many times by ISPs because this is more data that they can sell. They already have your personal information like where you live and details about you and what internet packages you may have purchased from them. And then they can now have a list of websites that you go to based on the DNS queries. Even though they're only collecting essentially metadata because they can't see into these encrypted HTTPS streams, they know you went to this website, that website, so on and so forth. But where the real risk comes in is with unencrypted DNS and they monkey with it here, where are they sending you? Especially in a public setting. Now this is a scenario and this is from Improv. I'll leave a link here. They did a little write up on this to kind of talk about DNS spoofing. But let's say this is the public Wi-Fi scenario. So we have a client issues a request to a real website, the attacker, or whoever owns the router who is providing free Wi-Fi injects fake DNS entries and it resolves to a fake website and gets you to the wrong place. So this scenario is obviously very problematic and it's one of the reasons that a lot of people recommend using whenever you're in a public setting like this, you would do a VPN. That way you're encrypting the traffic all the way here and kicking it down the road and saying that you trust the VPN provider. I say that because once again, if you're still using unencrypted DNS, they can't. Now this is the goal to be solved with DNS over HTTPS is I go in, I change to DNS over HTTPS. And instead of just using unencrypted DNS, I'm using TLS encrypted DNS via HTTPS. And this is the video I did the other day. So if you have TLS encrypted DNS over HTTPS, then now the entire layer is going to be transported over to here. And now there's no more visibility. The can see, can change goes away. They just see TLS traffic. And this uh, does not allow them to sinkhole the DNS and does not allow them to monkey with it, so to speak. And it breaks the attacker scenario of trying to inject or change to the DNS servers. But uh, as someone pointed out, and I was slightly incorrect uh, about how it worked, but we're gonna bring over Pop OS over here. 
an install I have. And we're going to show that I took this network TRR mode, modified integer two. This is what switches the uh, DNS over HTTPS on in Mozilla's under about config. And then the network URI, the default one is HTTP mozilla.cloudflare-dns.com slash DNS query. But the part I made a mistake on is it was caching the request. I currently have DNS blocked on this and I can confirm if you block DNS from a reboot so it has no chance to cache the lookups, uh, it will not resolve with this. So I did find this to be a little bit of a problem, but there's a couple of mitigations you could do. One, you could figure out what the DNS is this and add a host entry so it has a static entry in the system so you can still keep uh, from requesting DNS. Um, or you can use DNS, but it's going to do one query here, and as long as it gets to this proper website, you're good. But I did want to point out uh, for people that had the comments on that that you are correct that it was caching it. I just didn't check it, so we're going to go ahead and here and show there's no DNS queries on this. I'm gonna go ahead and unblock it in the firewall rules. So now I've grayed out that rule right there so we can have DNS queries again. And Google starts resolving and lots of DNS queries again. So uh, for those wondering if you were correct about that you were, it was my mistake for when I turned off DNS to show that you can once resolved, you can turn off DNS again and it will continue working once it's resolved. The, uh, I don't know why I typed that. <laughs> I'm already on Google. So we're going to go back over here to the firewall and re-enable the rule. Apply. If we wait a minute, all these will die. All these DNS requests will die, but it'll hold on to the cache and then continue to work like it did in my other video. So once it resolves that once. And like I said, if you wanted to continue using this, you could mitigate that. Now, I do not have a list because someone had asked if there's other uh, places that support this. I don't have a list at the moment of who all supports uh, DNS over HTS queries, but I, that list would be irrelevant if I made it in a video because there's probably always more companies doing it. Um, and as of right now, to my knowledge, it is not supported in PFSense. So standing up your own at this moment isn't available, but I'm sure soon enough, as this becomes a more popular standard, it'll be easy enough to stand up your own DNS over HTTPS so you can do this. But I do like this as a methodology because you're encrypting the DNS queries and everything at that level. Granted, there's still the operating system level that needs to at least first resolve the domain before it can pass the rest of the domains over that. But hey, it's still interesting. It's still uh, effective. It's still a methodology that does help mitigate the attack uh, of DNS spoofing. And anything that helps block some of the attack spoofing or doesn't give our ISPs one way to monetize us because I'm not going to discount for it. <laughs> so um, if that's a concern of yours, this does at least block a lot of that visibility that your ISP would have into there. Or the other option, as I said before, is using a VPN when you're on a public Wi-Fi so you encapsulate more of your traffic. And that's really what it's about is encapsulating your traffic in encryption layers via VPN or DNS. Right? Both are ways you want to avoid things like DNS spoofing or people messing with data streams because encrypted data streams, much, much harder to mess with than an unencrypted one. All right, hopefully this is helpful. This is just a follow-up for that particular uh, video I did the other day. So this is kind of part two of that. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to this channel to see more content, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon, and maybe YouTube will send you a notice when we post. If you want to hire us for a project that you've seen or discussed in this video, head over to lawrencesystems.com where we offer both uh, business IT services and consulting services and are excited to help you with whatever project you want to throw at us. Also, if you want to carry on the discussion further, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can keep the conversation going. And if you want to help the channel out in other ways, we offer affiliate links below, which offer discounts for you and a small cut for us that does help fund this channel. And once again, thanks again for watching this video and see you on next time.